driva ner bakändan då. Först jag ska lägga mig under först och kolla lite. Vart jag ska montera kameror och vad jag behöver ta lös. Så. Vi börjar alldeles strax. Okay, so as you saw in the previous section, I unbolted the drive shaft to the rear end and the front mount of the rear end, the big bolt in the end there. Now I'm gonna remove the calipers and I'm gonna cut the e-brake cable because uh, I'm gonna replace them anyway and it goes all the way into the e-brake level lever so I just cut it now it's gonna be new and I mount everything on the other car everything in the brakes is gonna be new e-brake cables pads shoes everything's gonna be new or rebuilt so let's start taking the brakes apart Let's do the other side. So, let's unbolt the, the front part of the whole uh, rear axle assembly. I already loosen it on the other side. I mean, I don't have to film both sides. One side is enough. But it, this part needs to come up and it's got one, two, three, four bolts, 18 millimeter. So let's loosen them. Nice. I have to go get that. Lucky for me, I have the 17 here. There you go. So, if my calculations are right, there's only four bolts that's holding it up. Let's see if I can. Here's one, and there's one on the other side that holds the whole assembly to the body. So I'm gonna put the jack under and do loosen these four ones. And if my calculations are right, 
it's gonna fall down. We'll see. Stay tuned. I'm spoiled with using air tools from when I worked as an auto technician. The only thing I don't know for sure, because in here is the fuel filter and I can't see from underneath if it's attached to the cradle or not so I gotta drop it down slowly and get in here and see if it fuel filter stays up top or if it's falling down let's see what happens we we'll lower the jack I suspect I need to go with the sledgehammer on it. You know, it's been sitting here 97. 2007, 2017, 22 years been sitting here. So that's why I think it needs a little bit of help. Remember the fuel filter. Gotta check that now. And it follows. I loosened the wiring, you know, for the fuel pump and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna go and look on the other side. See if so I don't uh, break any fuel lines because I got 30 liters in the tank and uh, I don't have a something to collect it in right now. The filler tube was attached to it also. And because the filler tube is attached to the subframe, it pulls the tank down with it. So I'm gonna unbolt the filler tube And I have to jack up the car to pull this out from here. But I don't think I have to show that on the video. How to unbolt the filler tube and jack up the car. So 
I get back on the video when I'm ready to pull this whole assembly out. Okay. Let's see if we can pull this one out. So I can show you what it looks like and how it's uh, how easy it is to take it off the car. I hope it's uh, high enough. We'll see. Let's start pulling. Let's try again. Let me just catch my breath, 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 and I go through everything about this rear end. So where do we start? I have a pointer here. Yeah, it works. I hope you can see this. Anyway, we start with where it's bolted on the on the car, on the chassis, the body. So This area, oh, that was a big spin. So this area, it's laying against the, uh, we call it a frame, but it's not really a frame because it's a unibody, but uh, call it frame rails maybe. All cars have them to, uh, make it stronger over this bend between the floor, the rear seat and the trunk floor over here. So they have kind of a a supporter. So this one lays on top of that on both sides. And it's attached with bolts from underneath one there big one and a big one in the front and they had the small one in the middle and I think the small one is more like uh, to center it so uh, it's centered on the frame rail whatever and then you have three bolts in the front here and finally One bolt here, and in this tube is the it's open from under underneath. It's open, so you can see what's inside it. In here, it's. Uh, I wonder why I got that flickering. Uh, the viscous coupling is in here, and the freewheel. A lot of people don't realize that but Volvo's got a special system with a freewheel. I'm gonna take this tube off and take it apart uh, in a later video and I'm gonna explain everything about the viscous coupling and the freewheel how it works and I'm gonna try to modify it so I get a constant 50 50 split on the power but uh, that's in another video so anyway this whole assembly up here is the, the shock it's here but previous owner removed the shocks because these are expensive uh, auto auto leveling shocks so when I bought the car, there were no shocks on it, but it doesn't matter. I'm not going to use that kind of shocks anyway. And you got the differentials with the shaft out to each wheel. 
and the spring sits there too. And this canister or whatever you want to call it, that's for, for the fuel tank. It's, with the, it's for the EVAP system. And here's where the fuel filter was sitting, where I removed. All this wiring is for, these are for the ABS sensors. I cut two wires that goes to the fuel pump and sending unit. I'm not gonna use that tank anyway, so I don't need those wires. But otherwise it's, it's pretty simple. The, let's see, it was the, mm, where did I see that? Oh yeah, here. These rods, they're adjustable. So you can adjust the toe on these rear ends. The camber and caster uh, are not adjustable, but the toe, toe in, toe out, you can adjust, but not camber and caster. So if you got a bad camber or caster, most likely the bushings are gone, but uh, I'm putting new bushings in this one. I'm going all the way, all the way. And these are, <sighs> comes from the factory with the limited slip. Uh, what else can I say? It's all al aluminum. So it's not very heavy. You got the sway bar on here too. So it's like, it's a complete unit. But this one is wider than the 460. So it's gonna be interesting to see what I have to do with the, with the floor on the 460 to, to get this one to fit. I'll probably have to widen the subframes here. It's going to be a wider track, but that's just good. Get better cornering in the wider track. So This is going to be a fun project, really fun project. I just have to junk the 850 and save everything I need for this. Fuel tank I don't need, EVAP system I don't need. So next video, we're going to start tearing out uh, the front which means uh, disconnect everything for the motor because I'm dropping the motor with the subframe in the front. That's easier. The subframe is only four bolts in the front, one in each corner. And you can drop the engine, transmission, suspension, everything. But I kind of, you gotta, Detach, de detach everything from the engine, wiring and exhaust, intake, stuff like that, or it's going to be hanging in the body of the car when you drop it. But that's the next video. I hope you uh, enjoy this and uh, learn something, like I said. Oh yeah, that's before I forget. I forgot to mention, when you take this out, you have to, I forgot about that. The tank straps. You have to remove the tank straps because they're attached. The rear of the tank straps are attached here on this subframe. And so you have to see you have one there to the right under the car and one uh, next to the rear door. 
you have to remove those. And when you remove those, the tank falls down. So I suggest if you're going to remove this and put it back on, same car, I suggest that you support the tank with something under it when you remove the straps. It's a lot easier to get them back. And uh, like I said, the fuel filter is here. If you have an 850, you gotta remove the fuel filter before you drop this one. And the cables, wire harness, and the fuel filler tube was with one bolt here and the bracket. So it's not that bad. I've done it once before, but I forgot about the tank straps and the fuel filler because I didn't take it out. I just dropped it on the floor on when I had a V70. So I didn't need to remove the tank straps and the fuel filler and stuff. So I didn't think about it. But it's like, like this. So I started in the front there with the drive shaft and that mount in the front. So I suggest you start in the front, then do the tank straps and support the tank, fuel filter, wire harness. If you don't want to cut these, you have to remove them from the in front of the tank, which means you have to drop the tank to get to them. That's for the fuel pump and the sending unit. And then uh, e-brake cable, calipers, then you do the front one. The other part you can leave on the car, see it's still hanging there. Uh, the brake line goes over here, it's attached in one clip there and it goes under and you have one clip over there. So you're losing that too, brake lines. And it is, then it's just these three bolts on each side. And if it doesn't fall down by itself, you just smack it with a sledgehammer and it comes down. Pretty simple. Go to the junkyard and get a front and rear end from a 850 or V70 and you can build something cool like they used to do with the DSM you know they put the DSM drive training all kinds of stuff anyway it's shower time and then uh, upload this video and the next one is gonna be the front thanks for watching later